Hey, and welcome back. Um, so uh, to talk about the rest of this lecture that's calling, po covering polynomials, interactions, and generalized linear models, I'm going to jump into a document that I generated using our markdown. Uh, so all of this code is available. I'm going to post it on the, the class GitHub and class Blackboard. Um, and uh, I'm going to skip over the polynomial stuff because I just covered that in the last few lectures within a keynote set of slides and jump down to this idea of interaction terms. Uh, I'm also going to point out that one of the things I did in the polynomial lecture that I didn't uh, put it in the slides to the very end is I actually started with uh, a known model where I knew the parameters and simulated data from it. That's something I'm doing just for demonstration purposes. It's not something you would do in the real world if this was actually data that you were analyzing. Uh, so the first bit of code here uh, is all just simulating the data up to the plot. So if this was uh, a data set in the real world, you would start with loading your data up and making the plot. So here's uh, some data. Uh, I have an a X and a Y, and I can see that there's some, a clear relationship between the X and the Y. And right now, when I just look at this as is, uh, there, you know, the this data looks like it's probably going to fall within the assumptions of linear regression. So we've got, you know, scatter in the data, but we've got a straight line. We don't see any clear trend. Uh, everything's looking pretty good. Nothing to worry about. Uh, I have the second variable w. Uh, to make things conceptually easier, I actually restricted w to only taking on three values, 0, 3, and 6. And that's just conceptual. It could have you know, filled out the whole range. This is just going to make it easier for me to explain things. Uh, so yeah, it can be any continuous variable or categorical variable, because again, ANOVAs are just examples of uh, linear models. OK, so here's my two, here's my y and my two of my explanatory variables, and both of them seem to fit the assumptions of regression fine. Uh, and let's see what happens. So I'll, I'll actually make this a little bigger. I'll write a linear model of just x to start with. And that looks, and, and add that to the line. And here's what I've done. So first of all, adding that linear regression looks good. But I've also, now I've colored each of the x, each, each point in this xy scatter point based on the value in w. So if I go back to w, remember I, I made the low points black, the medium points red, and the high points green. Uh, and now when I look at this uh, in the xy plot, uh, I can see and clearly see the effect of w. Uh, and I might start getting worried that, you know, well, maybe maybe my model's really only fitting uh, the first x. It's just something to worry about. Um, I get a highly significant relationship. But I can, I can do this for w as well. Uh, I can look at the relationship of w. Again, I get a nice fit to that model. Uh, nothing that I'm particularly worried about. Um, comes out highly significant. This is all stuff we've covered before. And if I fit the model, the next model, I have a third model, I3, uh, that includes both x and y. Again, we've, we've covered multiple regression before. So here I get that model uh, where I have the interaction between x and y. And here's how it actually looks. And, and I've done something here a little bit different, which is instead of plotting just one line, I plotted, in this case, because uh, I happen to know uh, that my w value took on three distinct values, I made predictions not uh, across all values of w, but at, for those three distinct values that w took on. Uh, you can do this sort of trick even when uh, your other covariates don't take on distinct values by binning them uh, to kind of get a way of, of seeing the influence of one variable on the other. But here you can kind of see that once I account for w uh, in this model, that things actually are behaving in a way that, that um, is kind of what I was expecting. Uh, and I guess, in a way where I'm no longer kind of panicking that, that my line didn't seem to fit well. Because once I accounted for w, I can see that at the different levels of w, there are 
you know, essentially different lines. And what we're actually seeing, which is something that was always there, but we didn't really explore when we talked about multiple regression, which is uh, what we're seeing here is that the effect of W on the relationship between X and Y is really one where W is essentially modifying the intercept. Uh, so if we go down, you can look at the summary. We see you know, both X and W are highly significant. And we can look here at some of the math. So if we look at some of the math, here is what our regression model looks like, Y with an intercept, uh, and then the slope for each of X and W. Note that if I'm focused on X, I can rewrite this. I can put parentheses around the intercept and the W term, and then I can say, well, I can turn that into some new variable B0, uh, and I can have a model that says Y equals B0 plus beta 1X, so Y is clearly a linear model of X, uh, but now the intercept B0 is itself a linear model of W. So just making it clear that we kind of didn't dive into this in detail when we talked about multiple regression, but that's essentially the assumption that is built into multiple regression, is that you can always, from the perspective of any one variable, refactor things such that the effect of the other covariates are on the intercept. And this latter bit of math is just so I can rearrange this from the perspective of W, so I can write a model between Y and W where the intercept between and the relationship between Y and W is a function of X. So uh, that's kind of showing kind of how uh, you know, how our default multiple regression model is actually working. Uh, and I'll just come back before wrapping this, this initial video up to show a little bit about how I produced this plot with three different lines, is that I actually called predict three different times, and I in each time I gave it essentially a different scenario. So in all three scenarios, X varied between zero and 10, uh, but in each, in these three scenarios, in scenario one, two, and three, I set W, to be either 0, 3, or 6. And I had to set the length of both the x and the w the same. So even though uh, w only took on a single value, I need, needed to make that um, the same length as my x. Cool. And then I just called predict three times and added the line three times. And in theory, I could have done the same thing uh, to generate composite intervals and predictive intervals as well, uh, though in this case, it would have made the figure pretty messy. Uh, to have seen that. But again, it's a useful trick to know for visualization purposes to, uh, to, as ways to kind of explore the interactions in your data between your two variables and to see if they meet this important assumption of a simple multiple regression, which is that the effect of each variable on the other is in terms of modifying its intercept.